Today we're going to have a look at this 36 volt cordless Makita pressure washer. We've been doing a service on the dozer here and we're going to have to get into the cannon bar to check the tension on the tracks and check the pivot shaft. You can see these tracks are all covered in mud and covered in dust and we don't want any of that getting inside the cannon. So, give her a clean off with this key to cordless pressure washer so it comes with this suction hose you can put it into any water source you got and it's got a pine screen here to stop the pressure washer from sucking up anything too bad there's an old oil caterpillar oil drum that I've given a wash out I'm going to use as my water source up here that's going to be 20 liters of water so we're going to see how quickly it uses that up you come down here and there's a, a finer filter here to filter out any little bits of junk from going into the pump. Now up here in this waterproof compartment is where the two batteries go. I've got two 5 amp hour batteries in here for this job today. You can close it up. When the machine's turned on you can press this battery button here and it'll tell you the how much power is left in both batteries you got. Over here, there's the on off switch. So it's got a high mode and a low mode. For cleaning the tracks today, I'm gonna to be using the high mode, but when I'm doing a job where I don't need as much pressure or high pressure could damage something, like when I'm blowing out the air conditioner condenser or when I'm blowing out a radiator, I put her on the low mode and that way you're not going to bend all the fins up. So with this pressure washer, it auto primes itself. So you just dunk the suction hose into your water source and it should suck the water through this pipe up into here and into there. It it's meant to be able to suck the water from up to a meter below it, but I think it's better to have the water source a little bit higher than the actual pressure washer because there's a lot of there's a lot of connections in here there's a connection here under the pressure washer then a connection here and a connection here and another connection there and if it sucks in just a little bit of air in through any of these connections then it won't build up pressure and it will stop and start and won't really work but by having the water source up above the pressure washer once it starts sucking it's going to siphon through here and keep pushing water into the pressure washer and if there is any little leak it's just going to drip a little bit and that little drip isn't going to give you any problems but if it's sucking that same little bit of air in it will give you trouble so we'll turn her on now and we'll see how she primes up So you see that there's no, there's a little bit of air, but that little bit doesn't worry, but there's no air, that's all water in there now. So I'll turn the machine off. So we've got our machine fully primed now, because the water's up high, she'll be siphoning down if anything. But now we're ready to attach our spray lens. Just go straight in here. Get the screw up. And when you're using this spray lance, you can twist this and you can go from a single stream to you twist it the other way and it turns into more of a spray.
So this is the bung here for our pivot shaft oil. So we can actually see it now because before it was underneath that layer of mud. That mud was sticky clay that yeah got all over everything when I was digging out a dam and there was a bit of bit of rain it was a bit sloppy and went everywhere and stuck to everything and now it's stuck like concrete but the Makita pressure washer had enough power to get it off and further up here is the plate which covers the inside of in here and inside there there's a grease nipple and with that grease nipple that's what we use to adjust the tension on our tracks because as you're using a bulldozer, the tracks slowly get longer as they get worn. So every now and then you've got to check your chain tension and you've got to just put a bit of grease in here, which pushes out that front idler, which adjusts the tension on your tracks. So just before I was pressure washing for about two and a half minutes on the high setting. So in here, this is a 20 litre drum it was completely full to start with and I think there's probably five litres left in here and then if we come down here under the machine we're going to press the battery button and we've still got full battery out about two five amp hour batteries that are under this cover. So up here is arguably one of the most important parts of a Caterpillar bulldozer, the air conditioning condenser. So you've got to keep in here nice and clean, otherwise your aircon doesn't work very well and you can put inside the cab because the cab's pretty much a greenhouse. So as you're working, you're making a lot of dust. There's two fans up above here that are blowing the air through. So dust gets sucked in here and if it gets all clogged up, then that's no good. So we're going to hose them out with our Makita cordless pressure washer and we're going to put in the low setting, or affectionately known as turtle, because all these fins here are pretty delicate, and if we were to use it on the high setting, we could bend them over, and that would make it so not so much air could get through. You can see there's already a bit of damage here, there's a few fins bent over here, a few fins bent over there, and yeah, that's just from the vibrations of the machine, so you'd never want to You'd never want to wash out something delicate like this on the high setting, even if you were a bit further back, because the chance of you bending all these fins over would be pretty high. So we're going to click her over here under the low setting. Now there's a picture of a turtle. So just then, I used it for about a minute and a half. Before I started, I filled this bucket up again, right to the top. If we have a look in here, we can see that we've probably only used three or four litres. So we've used about one bar out of each battery. It's flashing on this one. So this one's nearly lost one bar. That hasn't quite and yeah that's after a minute and a half on low and two and a half minute two and a half minutes on high so yeah this machine does use a fair bit of battery power so this is the storage box that the pressure washer is shipped to you in when you open it up all the parts are in here and once you take them out and connect them up you'll Never get all the parts back in there. But what this is really for is for cutting your water about. So you can put 50 litres of water in here and it's got this rubber seal around the top. So then you can shut it and you can lock it down and your water should stay in there and not all over the back of the ute. And then when you want to access the water, you undo it here. You open the lid, you put your suction pipe through here, and then you suck the water from underneath it and have the pressure washer sitting on the top there.
a little bit of an indent in there so it doesn't rattle off and fall on the ground. The other two things it's got, it's got a handle, and it's got a couple of wheels, and that'd be great if you're on a bit of concrete, but out here, that's not much good. So for me, it's easy just to cut 20 litres at a time out of the old oil bottles, because yeah, this weighing 50 kilos is too much for me to lift. So this cost me $600 posted to my door and for jobs like this out here where I've got no mains power and no mains water pressure I'd say it's a right tool for the job